I absolutely love the Fujifilm X-T4, but to be honest, the first few hours with it were pretty complicated because it's definitely a bit different to use than other cameras. So in this video, I want to save you that time in the beginning and share my settings with you and also tell you what you need to know to get started using this camera. <laughs> So let's start from the very beginning when you want to shoot video with this camera and alone by watching this part can actually save you one to two hours in the beginning because there were actually the big problems that I had. So directly when you turn the camera on you switch from stills to movie mode and then you just unfold your screen and you go into the menu in the camera menu setting and there you find a point which is called movie optimized control and you have to set that to on because what that does is basically deactivates this top dials here which are meant for photo i think it makes street photography a bit easier i'm not too experienced with that i think it's it's mostly meant for that so instead of using this top dials for your exposure you you use this front and back dials here so you use the back dial to set your shutter speed and you use the front dial to set your ISO and ap aperture. And here was actually the big issue that I had, at least in the first hour, I did not know that you can actually press these dials. Like here the front dial as you see, and here I can press that, and the back dial I can press that as well. On the back dial it's not too important, but on the front dial because when you press the front dial that switches between aperture and ISO. So if you want to change your ISO, you just look on the screen and you see if this wheel icon appears above ISO when you press this button, then you control the ISO. And when you press it again, you switch to aperture control. So then you control the aperture with this dial. And that was actually something that I was looking for all the time. Like it just didn't work. But there's also something to know for the back dial. So if you expose via your shutter speed, what people especially do when they don't use ND filters and that is when you go beyond the 8000 shutter speed that the camera automatically switches to automatic shutter speed. So then it might be that you turn your camera around and you see automatic exposure happening and you ask yourself why. So in that case, it's likely that you set your shutter speed too high. In that case, you just have to set it back and then you see it again at 8000 and it goes down and down and down. It also indicates that via the color in the menu if it's set to automatic or not. So just look for that. I was really like messing around for probably 30 minutes just because I did not know what the camera is doing there. I was completely not used to that because I, I came from a GH5 and EOS R before and it was not the case on these cameras. So that was really different. And also worth mentioning here is that even if I have the movie optimized control on, I still set my top dials to the following positions. So for the ISO, I set it to C. And for the shutter speed, I set it to T and for the exposure compensation to C. The reason why I do that is that these settings basically allow you to control the camera pretty similar to the movie optimized control mode when you're in photography mode. Sometimes I just want to have a quick photo and if I then have to control the camera in a, in a completely different way, even if that would usually be better for a photo, then it's quite annoying. And so I prefer to be able to control the camera like I did before, just having the shutter speed at my thumb and using my pointing finger for the front dial. It's just a lot easier to use than for me because I shoot video most of the time. The only thing that still changes then is that I have to use the ring on the lens in case there is one to change the aperture. Of course, if you have a lens where you don't have a ring like that, then you can also just use the front dial to do that is exactly as you did in the movie optimized control mode. It's also something to consider you don't have to do that, especially if you shoot only video, then it doesn't matter at all. But if you shoot the occasional photo or time lapse like I do, definitely makes sense to do that. And by the way, if you just started out shooting videos on mirrorless cameras like the Fujifilm X-T4 and it's all new to you, I recently created a new course where I teach you all the technical aspects of video shooting on cameras like that. So if that sounds interesting for you, make sure to check it out. I will leave a link to that in the description below. And let's come to the next point here regarding the Fujifilm X-T4 and that's to set your movie mode and the file format according to your needs. And with according to your needs, I'm mostly mean the speed of your computer because your computer needs to handle or needs to be able to handle HVC files on the hardware side to be able to have a smooth video editing experience which is definitely what you want. So 
you can set it to MPEG-5 in the menu. And I would strongly suggest doing that if your computer is fast enough because that means that you get 10-bit footage and 10-bit just makes color grading a lot easier and you get smoother gradients and so on, less color artifacting if you have heavy grades. So it's overall much better. I actually record all of my footage in 10-bit, so HGVC or MPEG-5 as it's called in the menu. And my computer is the MacBook Pro 16-inch with 32 gigabits of RAM and the 5500 graphics and what else, i9 processor. But even on the normal standard 16-inch MacBook Pro, that shouldn't be a problem at all because that also supports HVC on the hardware side. So it really depends a bit on your computer. If it's an older computer that doesn't do that, might be better for you to use the other options there to use MPEG-4 because that's a lot easier to handle than for your computer and then you have smoother editing, but therefore you can't color grade that heavily. So how it is for you? Do you already have a computer that is fast enough for HVC editing or do you still lag a bit behind? Just leave it in the comments below. I probably can come up with some, some other ideas to make life easier for you in future videos. And there's also another important setting in that category and that's the movie mode or also resolution, frame rate and bit rate. And for resolution, I generally recommend to just leave it at 4K because there you get the highest quality footage, which is what I want. But of course, especially if you want to have higher frame rates for more slow motion and so on, then it's also totally fine to shoot in 1080p. So actually this settings also depend a bit on the type of footage that you want to produce, especially regarding the, bit, the frame rate. So for frame rate, I usually adjust it a little bit depending on what kind of footage I choose. For example, right now I'm recording an A-roll here, which is in 24p or actually 24.97 or 9.8p in the menu and I do that because here I don't want to slow down the footage in post. So when I record B-roll, when I get shots of maybe people or some camera B-roll also on for my videos here, then I generally record in 60 frames per second because then that allows me to slow the footage down in post. So I have a nice slow motion shot and also smooth, smooth out a bit of the jitter in case I cause some shake there when I record the video. So that really helps a lot to make my footage look a bit more professional. So I definitely recommend here to adjust the settings a bit on your needs. I have it set up in my quick menu so that I can quickly access that while I use the camera. Then there's also the bit rate. I just leave it to 200 Mbits all the time. Doesn't matter what modes I use because it's just good enough. It's like the file sizes are not too big, but the quality that I get with that bitrate option is definitely good enough. Like I never had any issues color grading it or so on. So it seems like this bitrate is totally fine on that camera. Even if you shoot in flat color profiles like F-Log that usually require a bit more data. So now I already mentioned F-Log and that's the next thing that I want to talk about quickly because what sucks a bit on this camera is that you can't set F-Log in the quick menu. So it takes a bit longer because you have to go into the menu there and just quickly in case you don't know what F-Log is or log profiles in general, this gen F-Log is basically a color profile that is very flat, so low in contrast and low in saturation. And that's good because it allows you to capture more dynamic range. So you can see more details in the shadows and highlights at the same time in one shot, which is something that you oftentimes want or need in your shots. Downside of that is that you have to color grade your footage definitely later, but therefore it looks a bit better and more professional. So the problem here as mentioned is that you have to go into the menu to set that, but oftentimes I wanna quickly switch between a normal color profile and F-Log. So it's kind of a problem on run and gun shooting. So what I did is I set F-Log in the My Menu tab, where basically when you click Menu, this Menu tab directly opens and I set it at the very top so that I'm directly on this F-Log option. So I just have to press Menu two times and then I can change to F-Log. So that's the quickest way of doing that. Only takes me a few seconds. It would still be better to have that in the quick menu. So Fuji, please change that but still it only takes a few seconds. So that's a quick and easy way to do that. So setting up, set it up in your My Menu tab at the very top, and then it's very easy to switch. Of course, if you don't want to shoot much in F-Log or if you shoot in F-Log all the time, if you don't use different picture profiles, then you can also put something else there to quickly access that it really depends on what setting you want to use there. And by the way, I want to publish more color grading tutorials in the future. So if you want to know how to color grade F-Log, then please leave hashtag F-Log in the comments below so that I know there is interest and then I will come up with a tutorial about that. 
So F-Lock enhances the dynamic range of the footage coming from the X-T4 a lot, but there's also another way of enhancing the dynamic range, not as much as on F-Lock, but at least a little bit when you're in normal picture profiles or film simulations as it's called. And I use a way to do that very quickly via the quick menu. So I also want to share that here with you. And what I'm basically talking about is the tone curve. So when you go in the menu, you find tone curve there and there you can set both settings, the shadows and highlights both to negative two. And that also decreases the contrast from the image or the film simulation quite a bit. And therefore it captures more dynamic range. So as you can see in the comparison before, when I set it to the normal setting in Classic Chrome, for example, it's quite contrasty. And now with a tone curve adjustment, you see that there's less contrast. So you capture more dynamic range. Essentially, it also probably requires some color grading depending on the shot and post then, but therefore you get more dynamic range. It is less color grading than in F-Log. So that is great. So the way how I use that is that I generated custom settings for all the all the film simulations that I prefer to use, which is Classic Chrome, Eterna, and Eterna Beach Bypass. So as you can see here, I have one custom setting for Classic Chrome, which is called Standard. There, I just use a tone curve 00, zero so nothing changed here. And then I have one Classic Chrome custom setting for flat. So there I have negative two and negative two, and that's flatter. And I did that for all all film simulations that I use, so also for Eterna and Eterna Bleach Bypass. So that helps me a lot to at least capture a bit more dynamic range without having to go to F-Log. And that's oftentimes a bit better because if I got many shots in, let's say, Classic Chrome, and then there is one shot where I really need a bit more dynamic range to capture more details in the shadows, for example, then I can just quickly change it to flat, and therefore I have a bit more dynamic range. Oftentimes I actually end up shooting all the time in flat because it's it just means that I have to add a little bit of contrast in post, but it gives me a bit more flexibility because it captures more detail. So that's definitely something that I would recommend you to do the same because then you can just go into your quick menu and you can quickly change between the standard and the flat versions of each color profile or film simulation. There's also a setting called dynamic range or DR in the menu, but as far as I know from other reviewers that's supposed to make your footage look bad or so, so it doesn't really work and that's why I did not try it out and I can't say anything about it but of course you can try it for yourself just get some test shots and if it looks good for you then that's totally fine and you can use that as well. So that's it here for today I hope I could help you a bit to get started with the Fujifilm X-T4 quickly and you don't need so much time at the beginning as I did and if yes then please leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button for upcoming videos. See ya!